Hey, this is Matt once again. We're back to another video. This is another paid request, this time for Danny Dundada. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, PayPal is usually the best bet, or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for Midnight Run, the 1988 film starring Robert De Niro, Charles Grodin, Yafit Kodo, John Ashton, you have Dennis Farina, Joe Pantoliano, and Midnight Run is a lot of fun. It, it was entertaining to watch this again. Uh, it's directed by Martin Brest, who had done Beverly, the first Beverly Hills Cop. He was going to do War Games, but he got fired from it. So John Badham replaced him and finished the film. I think because Martin Brest wanted to make it kind of felt like a darker movie. Martin Brest sadly didn't do a whole lot because I think he did Geely and then that killed his career. I don't even remember what he did between this and Geely. I'd have to look up what the hell he did. I don't think he did a whole lot of films. Which is too bad because he obviously had some talent. But the story of the film is Robert De Niro is a bounty hunter. He used to be a cop but we found out later what happened and why he's not a cop anymore. He's a bounty hunter that's supposed to bring this accountant, played by Charles Grodin, back to L.A. Because Charles Grodin had embezzled this Chicago mob guy, Dennis Farina, for $15 million. So, while Rob De Niro gets this guy and is going to L.A., he's got all these people after him. He's got the... Dennis Farina sent mob guys to go after them. Yafikoto from The Running Man and Alien. He's an FBI guy that wants Charles Grodin for, to testify. But then he'll be going to jail. John Ashton from Beverly Hills Top 1 and 2 and, and the, the new one. He's a fellow bounty hunter. Marvin who is also chasing after them because he wants the the bounty for himself. So there's all these people in the woodwork coming for them, and De Niro is adamant to get and do his job because suppose he's going to get 100000 from Joel Pantoliano, who's the bail bondsman, so that De Niro can open up, I think, this coffee shop. What makes the film work is the cast. And the movie, I think, is pretty funny. Uh, it's got a good musical score. I think Danny Elfman did the score. Which I remember going, this is Danny Elfman? Because I'm so used to Danny Elfman sounding similar because of all the Tim Burton films he did. Batman, Beetlejuice. I'm like, wow, he does have more variety he did in that film The Kingdom, directed by Peter Berg. Very different, unique score for Danny Elfman. Same with this. Like, this almost sounds a bit like uh, Harold Faltemeyer, almost. Like he did for Fletch at Beverly Hills Cop. Not the same, to be fair, but more in that regime compared to what Danny Elfman did before. I mean, before, uh, yeah, that the Danny Elfman did before itself. So. Or afterward. So I thought it was a pretty decent musical score. There's a couple good action sequences. There's a scene on a plane where Charles Drone's trying to fly and Robert De Niro's character is hanging on for dear life and there's some good wide shots to show, you know, real people on real planes and not just CG crapola. There's another bit where they're both in this jeep and they're going off road and there's another bit where the two of them and John Ashton are being chased by this helicopter and De Niro and John Ashton have to shoot the helicopter. Some model work involved with the chopper, but the other stuff is like a real chopper and a real car. So there's a couple of good action sequences there. The supporting cast, they all work on all cylinders. Yaffa Koto is fun. I mean, he's May he rest in peace. Great actor. I like that as the FBI guy, he keeps stealing John Ashton's cigarettes. <laughs> and even Ashton goes, 
hey, be careful this guy, he'll take you cigarettes. <laughs> or, watch you cigarettes around this guy. I uh, did John Ashton as Marvin. I like the running dad where De Niro, Marvin, look out! He goes, he turns, and De Niro knocks him out. <laughs> That's a funny running dad. Uh, Dennis Farina is the mob boss. When he's getting mad at his minions, he has some pretty funny lines. Like, uh, I'm going to stab you through the heart with a fucking pencil. <laughs> uh, Joel Patigliano from The Matrix and the Bad Boys films and the Goonies. He's great as a guy that throughout the film is getting more and more riled up, more and more antsy. Just getting closer and closer to the deadline because if he doesn't get this then he may be well out of a job. And most of our, most, to save the best for last, Robert De Niro and Charles Grodin. The way they worked with each other, their chemistry with each other, De Niro doing more of a comedy because he didn't really get to do comedies that much. He was definitely deemed more as a serious actor. I mean, he did... Uh... Oh, what's that film with Jerry Lewis? Scorsese did... Damn, it was on the tip of my... I'm bad with names and titles. It's not, people will mention in the comments, but... Did that film. But, I mean... That was still trying to be a bit more of a... I don't want to say thriller, but... A bit more to it than that. I'll just look it up. What What is that? De Niro... Jerry Lewis... The Tina Comedy, okay. That's what it's called, the Tina Comedy. But you see, this is kind of the first step of him doing much more of these type of comedies. There's the one he did with Bill Murray. Uh, there's the... Was it Mad Dog and Glory? I think it was called. There's, of course, Meet the Parents and, you know, was it... Dirty Grandpa, like all these other comedies. But, I would say, I think this is the best comedy he's been in. I like to meet the parents and some of the other stuff, but I think this is the best comedy he's been in. Because, his character fit his personality. I think he worked well. Charles Grodin, may he rest in peace, he's definitely an MVP for this film. Because, he plays a role that in the wrong hands could be very irritating. Case in point, Zach Galifianakis in Due Date. I like Due Date, mostly for Robert Downey Jr., but Zach Galifianakis is really annoying in that movie. But Charles Grodin, he's never annoying. Like, he's very subtle, but what he's saying like makes sense, but at the same time, you can see why it gets under De Niro's skin all the time. And even though Charles Grown is being frustrating, he still has this kind of lovable quality for the viewer. Like when he's scared to fly, though, I can't, I can't, I can't be here. Like, these things, they, 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 they always do something. Like. A kid flies too big. That's what it is. It's too big. It's too big. I can't fly. It's too big. <laughs> and just a lot of the little back and forth where he's mentioned all the phobies he has. I have this phobia. I have this phobia. It's like, yeah, if you don't cooperate, you don't suffer from fistophobia. <laughs> Which I have stolen that line. I've used that throughout my time and doing YouTube reviews. Apparently that duck out there, he's going to suffer some fistophobia too. Punch Donald Duck in the face after this. But yeah, a lot of the back and forth is fun. Oh, you know, cigarettes are killers. Yeah? So are women. <laughs> or even little bits without, like before De Niro finds him. There's this bit that I thought was funny on the plane where he, he took Yafikota's badge and he's making it like a fake one. 
and there's like a little kid near him. How does that look? What's fine to me? <laughs> the way the kid says it, like very subdued, but it's like innocent. It's like because he's like confused what's going on. He's like looking like. It's like, what's fine to me? Just something about that again was so endearingly innocent that it did did, uh, did a chuckle out of me. Other bits like the more and more aggravated uh, De Niro gets while he's talking to Joel practically, I was like, I will shoot him and dump him in the fucking swamp. Like he's doing this to children, like not really, but. <laughs> Or even when they're yelling about who lied to who first. You lied to me first. Yes. But as far as I knew, you lied to me first. What? Yeah, as far as I knew, you lied to me first. So because of that, you need to apologize. <laughs> and that's the thing about the film is that you really need two guys to have really good chemistry but you gotta have the one guy not be too stingent and too insufferably either bleak or angry or stubborn to the point he just becomes unlikable to the viewer same with the other person where okay they, they gotta be annoying the lead character but you can't have it where they're annoying the viewer because that's what Zach Galifianakis failed at he annoyed Robert De Niro, Robert, De Niro uh, Robert Downey Jr., another Robert, but he annoyed the viewer as well. And why didn't I like Due Date? Because Robert Downey Jr., is, every time he snaps, I agree with him. And I, li I live vicariously through him, snapping at Zach. But if we're supposed to feel sorry for Zach Delphinette, the film failed. Here, we do feel for Charles Grodin's character. He meant well. He stole the money, but he gave it the charity. He kept enough to survive. And it, we did. We learned more about De Niro. Uh, he was a cop. He didn't want to be on the take. Everyone, everyone else was. He had a few options. Go to jail, leave, or, or die. So he had to leave. He has his watch that his ex-wife gave him. At one point, they have to go see her. He sees his kid he hasn't seen for a while. It's a rather sweet scene. I like that the daughter, the inmate, where she hates her dad or she's yelling, screaming, being annoying. She seems like very quiet, very shy. Tries to give money to her dad, and dad's like, "Listen, I can't take it. No, please, please, I can't take it. Okay. It's a bit cold outside. Get back outside, okay." So it's a nice, sweet father daughter moment and when he leaves and you see her staring and standing outside like you feel a bit of sympathy for De Niro's character and you tell Charles Grodin feels the same way uh, there's another bit where they kind of converse in the this train car these little moments do matter so that when the finale happens it doesn't feel like it comes out of left field. It doesn't feel like it's unearned. And by the end, the, the goodbye is a very nice, sweet goodbye. See you in the next life. It is rather sweet. And... You know, the ending is not this big Atcha finale. Which I was surprised by, because it's been a while since I've seen the film. And I usually expect the finale to be like this big shootout, but it's not. It's pretty much this meeting, everyone converges, and then everything's fine. Um, so it makes it a bit refreshing, but I'm, I'm, I'm so used to an action finale that there's a part of me that was disappointed. But okay, you know, it didn't need it. I'm fine with it. <laughs> but yeah, Charles Grodin, just his kind of little observations about what he eats... De Niro eats and smokes and oh I don't know that's bad for you man I don't know that, that's really bad for you you know just, just, I mean just you know with all this stuff you have man just just kind of saying like this kind of like he's being endearing at least to, to be he's not 
being loud, obnoxious. But he's like saying these things with like a tone like he he means well, but it's just that he does annoy the hell out of De Niro as well. And that's hard to capture, but like Charles Grodin was a great casting choice. I think the studio at one point wanted Robin Williams. I think Robin could have worked, but he would have been a much louder performance. Would have been a much more exaggerated performance. And I still think you would have had the endearing quality. Because Robin showcased that a lot. And part of me would like to have seen Robin Williams in there, but I like that Charles Grodin is in it because he did a great job. So, again, there's a part of me that's that what if that we'd like to see, but at the same time, I like what we got as well. I, again, I, I still smile at the, Marvin, watch out! Huh? <laughs> Which that does lead to selling to the point where he really is, and Marvin doesn't believe it, so... It's not just a funny running dad. There's a point to it as well later on. So uh, it's a pretty good script. A couple of decent bits of stunt work. Overall, entertaining film. It was a lot of fun to watch this again. Great score. I guess this got direct-to-video sequels. i never seen a single one of them. I think uh, Shooter McGavin himself is in it, and Ed o. Ross from Married with Children. So Christopher McDonald, like, they're in it. I mean, I've never seen them. Never seen them, so I don't know how they're like. I think there's three of them. But overall, pretty entertaining movie. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye for now.